cappuccino. Cappuccino? Lui non ha la cucina. Okay. Well, hey, everybody. Eric Holland here with uh, Italia Yachts USA and Dave and Walters Yachts. And welcome to the uh, Italia Yachts 14.98 webinar. It's great to have everybody here. Uh, we have with us uh, some special people today. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, get everyone all set to go here. Um, so <clears throat> we've got uh, the yacht designer, Mauricio Casuti. And we have and the technical uh, folks from Atai Yachts, um, Alberto Guzzo and uh, Nicolo Bagagiolo. And uh, I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and uh, introduce um, all these guys. So uh, Maurizio, um, can you go ahead and just uh, tell us a little bit about your background and uh, how you've been helping Atai Yachts? Uh, hello to everybody. Uh... I'm the, the designer, uh, I mean the designer of the boat, of course, together with the, with the Italia Yacht team. And uh, okay, uh, my life uh, is more or less uh, from 40 years or more dedicated to, to sailing boats design and uh, is some kind of a passion uh, and uh, also a, a business, of course. And uh, with Italia Yacht, we have this special relation because uh, uh, we designed the first boat. Uh, uh, we were a uh, close uh, uh, friend uh, with the founder, uh, Franco, from when we were young sailors. And after that, things uh, uh, went on really, really well with the second project now. Uh, we have Daniele and his team on board, uh, and uh, we have designed this new boat that we cannot wait to see realized and sailing. Uh, and very happy to be in contact and in this webinar with uh, with the U.S. Uh, Eric and and all the U.S. clients and and guys. Thank you, Maurizio. It's great to have you here, and we can't wait to see the fourteen nine eight in in person very soon. And uh, 
and Nicolo. Nicolo is with Ataya Yachts, and uh, Nicolo, uh, what's your job at Ataya Yachts, and how's your background uh, fit with the company? Yes, hi everybody. I'm uh, the architect. I'm an architect of the Italia Yacht in the technical department. I arrived in Italia Yacht uh, 10, 11 months ago after a master's degree in uh, yacht design. But uh, before I studied architecture, civil architecture, and I worked uh, in a, an architecture studio for uh, some other, <laughs> other field. But uh, by now, when I arrived in Italia Yacht, Yacht, I start uh, work uh, on um, 1488, uh, and uh, I'm very happy to meet you in this uh, occasion. Thank you very Thank you. much. And uh, Alberto. Hi, everybody. Uh, I am an aerospace engineer. And uh, after the, the master's degrees, I decided to bend my way and to pursue, to follow a passion. I'm a young sailor and uh, I did the same master in yacht design that uh, Nicolò did in the Politecnico of Milano. I started my, my career in uh, another shipyard and now it's five months that uh, I'm here in my new house, Italia, Italia Yachts. And uh, I'm glad to be here. Uh, in, I, in the in the technical office, I am strictly in contact with the uh, Maurizio because uh, I follow the composite uh, part and uh, all the system layout and stuff like that. Excellent, thank you, Alberto. So, um, so we're going to roll into some uh, Q and A here with the the panelists. And uh, if anyone has a question you would like to ask, uh, there is a Q and A section here as part of Zoom. Please go ahead and ask questions and we'll try and answer them as we go along and we'll have a Q&A session for the uh, attendees as well at the end. And you know, I think uh, we'll go ahead and we'll start with uh, Maurizio here. And uh, so Maurizio, you've designed many yachts. Um, you, you've been a designer for you know decades and uh, including uh, one of the Italia uh, yachts that we have here in the United States already, we have an Italia 13.98 here. Uh, that you designed uh, several years ago. And how does the 1498 compare to what's out there already on the market and your past designs? Uh, you see, the, the first nice thing is that if I consider uh, the guys working in, in my office and uh, the Italia Yacht team, it seems that I, I'm the only old guy. So they are keeping me alive and uh, <laughs> and, uh, and kicking. The, uh, the boat uh, was, uh, was designed around the concept of being, a, how can I say, something like a, a slippery boat. It means a boat that uh, should be elegant and uh, uh, going fast uh, through the water with fair lines, uh, elegance, and uh, we have seen that mm, some of our competitors who are going uh, in the direction of uh, upsizing of boats, so wide boats, uh, heavier boats. Uh, uh, sometimes this is due to uh, the kind of construction or interior building, and uh, you know, uh, in. Uh, in the boat building, but not only so in boat building, uh, building uh, a refined and light structure is expensive. So uh, heavy is cheap, and we we but it's not the philosophy of of, of Italia yacht. So uh, the new boat will be narrower than many of the competitors, but for sure will be very nice. And uh, if I have to choose a couple of words to define there, I would, uh, I would say she's, a, she's a, and will be a, a, a sophisticated lady. Uh, I'm, very, I'm very happy about this design. It's really much in, in, in my 
in my mind and in my idea of, of having a boat and designing a boat. Well, that's excellent, Rizzo. And, and I have to say, even from just the, the renders that uh, I've seen, the boat is just, I, I mean, it looks beautiful. The boat looks absolutely incredible. And I can't wait to see it in person. I know the rest of us can't as well. You've done an cool. excellent job. <laughs> But you see, the, the renders tell only part of the story because they are uh, bidimensional and uh, I don't know, probably you have seen the, the small model we had in, in the boat shows in Dusseldorf. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have a completely different feeling when you see the volume of the thing. And absolutely, I'm pretty sure that will be very nice. Very nice. Excellent. Well, we can't wait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And that actually rolls me into, into my next question here. And actually, this is uh, going to be for uh, Nicolo. And yes. so the, the 1498 is uh, similar to the 1198 in that it offers two variants, the, uh, the sport line model and then the Belicio model. And what are the difference between the two versions? And how, how has Italiots been able to determine what goes on a sport boat and what goes on the Bellissimo model. Yes. Can I share the screen to show some renders uh, about the exterior and the interior? Yes. So it's also better to understand the... Uh... Oh, yes. Share. Is it visible? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, perfect. So, starting from the Bellissimo version, we have the... Um, we have two two versions that Bellissima is 41. Uh, in the deck, the differences are um, considered about, uh, for example, winches, that in the sporty one, we have six winches on the deck. Instead, in the, in the um, Bellissima Cruiser one, we have uh, only four winches in the cockpit part. In uh, both um, versions, there is a, a very a huge surface to leave the cockpit area and uh, also a lot of space uh, to move uh, around the steering wheels uh, as we can see in the in this view for example differences uh, are the differences between uh, uh, bellissima and uh, uh, sorry yes bellissima sporty version is that the bellissima version is uh, all covered you know surface by the tick Instead, the um, sporty version is um, all the surface is uh, with an anti skid made uh, my, by the bolt. Passing through the sorry that I changed the inside part. Wait, okay, <coughs> sure. Going inside, the main difference no, we have uh, in uh, both. Uh, version the option of two or three bathroom the first one is in the main cabin at the bow and the second one on the stern or the third one also in the stern in the each uh, one for each side this in this one that uh, i'm showing to you is the uh, sporty one and uh, also this uh, that uh, in my opinion, and also the opinion of the um, shipyard, is the version more sporty, more clear, with the um, linear, and the um, feeling is, um, let's say, more light than uh, the Bellissima version that uh, late, later I show you. Mm -hmm. The spaces uh, in both one, uh, in both boats, uh, are very large. And uh, it's perfect to live inside uh, to also to cook uh, because we have a quite large uh, kitchen, a big dining table, and also a very practical desk uh, during the navigation for the, for example, in this uh, image, uh, the sporty one. Passing in the Bellissima version, uh, inside uh, we have uh, more uh, a warm and a family for a family uh, feeling. The use of the ladder and also for the, and the wood is larger and with color that are warmer. 
also for the wooden slats that we have on the side that uh, plays with the light that comes from outside it's very it's very difficult a uh, different sorry and also as a um, different uh, um, feeling for the people that uh, lives inside passing inside the cabin we have also uh, these uh, wooden slats on the sides and uh, i think that uh, is very particular is the use of the mirror on the buckets covering the buckets that uh, uh it's very interesting because uh, with the lights and this uh, and this mirror the space uh, seems very bigger and uh, the lights uh, comes uh, in uh, all over the direction yes also a very important um, thing i think i think is uh, the um, the choose that the owner could be could um, do for the text Textiles and leather, because with the different color of uh, the texture inside, the boat could uh, change the feeling, the lines, the style, and uh, you you could uh, make your boat with the simple choose of uh, your textiles. Yes, yes, of course. You know, being a semi-custom manufacturer with a tie yachts. Uh, they can do many different things with the upholstery, the, the textiles, uh, the paneling of the interior, the multiple options, and uh, of course, you know, all the natural light and uh, the diffuse light sources on the boat just make the boat seem much, much bigger. It is a big boat as well, but it just seems even larger, like you're at home. Um, and and it's, a, it's a very big project, uh, Nicolo, and you know, and that leads me actually to my next question. And, um, so how does this project compare to past projects that Tayax has taken on, like the 1398 or the, or the 1598? Um, and has this been a more detailed design than previous models? Yes, I think uh, that uh, we, we made a, a different approach because we focus more in all details of the project and uh, we wanted to give more importance uh, to all the small details that uh, all together make the boat uh, very different and uh, high with a high, high level that uh, is uh, very characteristic of this boat of, uh, of this uh, shipyard the um, we wanted to focus uh, uh, for example in these um, very rich feelings that uh, you curve feel going inside the boat, the warm and quite clear lines and taxities that in my opinion could give a very different approach from a boat with a very cheap taxity and the sensation that different and high quality taxities could give you. So in my opinion, the, also studying together with the very expert engineer, designer, architect, and uh, put together all ideas, all opinions, is, it was very hard <laughs> and different, but uh, at the end, uh, I think we had a very good uh, teamwork. Well, that's absolutely fantastic, and, I, I, and I've seen as well that the Italiots team has really come together for this project to, to make things happen and get the 1498 uh, into a reality. And, you know, obviously, you know, uh, the hull design has a lot to go into the, into the boat, you know, and it's a lot about the performance and handling that goes into it. And, you know, it is, is the 1498's uh, design, um, is it a brand new from scratch design or is there uh, a portion of it that maybe is from taken from older boats? Oh yes, uh, uh, we designed this boat uh, with, with a new design, a new project for the hull. Of course, uh, we uh, achieve a lot of um, points that uh, we want, uh, that, that we want uh, and both of Italia Hyatt shipyard has. So we wanted to make a, a lot of family feeling with the other hull of previous boat, but uh, we designed a new hull uh, 
uh, with, because we wanted to study better perfect performances, uh, but maintaining the older styles and the typical style of uh, an Italian yacht uh, boat. Well, that's fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, it's, it, Nicole. It's been a uh, you know absolute journey to see this boat being uh, designed and constructed, and now uh, going into the assembly phase. So we really can't wait. Um, uh, Alberto, uh, question for you: the um, you know the, the interior renderings we saw from Nicole were very beautiful. The yacht looks absolutely incredible on the inside. Um, but you know, how is it possible for a yacht with such performance to have such a beautiful interior um, on this yacht? You know, most performance-oriented boats I see, the interiors are much more bland, um, very minimalistic. This boat seems to have a very beautiful interior, even for the sport model. How is that possible with a boat with this speed and performance? I think this is possible thanks to the uh, a lot of little uh, technology advances is that allow us to uh, gain more room and volume inside the the, the hull. Uh, also, maintaining uh, uh, let's say race construction, race uh, uh, structure and hull. Also, because Maurizio did a, a great job on uh, uh, studying the the, the hull. Uh, the, the hull lines, also using uh, VPP, Velocity Prediction Program, also use the, using uh, finite uh, elements method, a lot of uh, new uh, software and technologies in order to obtain, uh, uh, not oversizing the, the, the structure and, the, uh, and all the inside, in order to gain uh, all this volume to, to give to another uh, excellence of the archi uh, architecturing like uh, Emanuele uh, Pilon, the architect, uh, and allow him to uh, use all that space uh, to design all that luxury and familiar and using and livable, livable uh, space. Uh, I think this is the, 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 the reason why we, we reached the, the matching between a uh, race performance, performance uh, boat, but also a cruising and luxury boat. That's an incredible, uh, you know, turn of, uh, you know, circumstance there and being able to do things with the modern technology we have with computer aided design and uh, the building uh, technologies we have in order to make a boat like this. And, you know, on to those building technologies, how is the construction of the 1490 different from previous models of a tie uh, uh, For a lot of, of, of things, but I think that uh, the, the main uh, change is the, the construction method. Uh, and I'm talking about the, the, the vacuum infusion uh, because the, the, the infusion uh, in comparison to the manual laminating uh, has two main advantages. The first one is uh, the, the technology advantage. Uh, you know, when you use the infusion, uh, you, you, you are sure that the um, percentage of fiber of, uh, per unit of volume on the composite is higher than a manual uh, lamination. Uh, that means uh, a lot of mechanical properties uh, more higher mechanical properties and this also means a lighter boat and so a faster boat and the second advantage is that uh, the construction uh, become uh, independent from the hand of the worker and so we can ensure the same quality and the same uh, uh, performance for every boat in every part of the boat so I think this is the main uh, uh, characteristic. So the uh, the advantages of you know we had we've had computer aided design for some time now, but it's become even better over time. The VPP software has become uh, more accurate, mm -hmm. has advanced. The uh, technology used in building the boat has become more advanced. So now we're actually able to create a boat such as the fourteen nine eight 
which uh, five years ago was probably not possible. Exactly, exactly. So that, five that, years ago, it was not possible. And that's, that's absolutely incredible. So, you know, it, it just speaks volumes about, you know, the uh, Thai Yachts, you know, as a brand, it has been continuously innovating on the current technologies and in future technologies and coming from their background where, you know, we've had uh, the 998 and the 1198 winning world championships. And now we're innovating on newer and larger models to hopefully follow in their footsteps and maybe even win an ORC world championship. Maybe we'll see. I guess so. <laughs> so, um, uh, Maurizio, back over to uh, back over to you here. Um, so, a, a big part of uh, the, the being a, a large boat, well, any boat really, is uh, weight distribution, and uh, it plays a major role in performance, obviously. Um, and it was such a a large boat, and especially with that such an intricate interior, how are you able to balance the weight in the boat to make the boat sit right in the water and have the performance you're looking to get out of it? Uh, it was interesting uh, when we met all together the first time and uh, Mirko Arbore, the interior designer, presented uh, his sketches and his vision, uh, especially for the Bellissima version, uh, uh, I told, okay, guys, this is really a challenge uh, because the uh, weight of, for the interiors will be around this and this. And uh, with such a lot of feature particulars, uh, uh, at the beginning, it seems to be really, really complicated to, to match the aesthetics, the architectural part, and the functional and weight. Uh, we, we, Start and that still design a race boat, so we are paying a lot of attention to weights and weight distribution because definitely at the end it makes a better boat. But uh, I have to say that with the Italia Yachts design team and uh, all the people involved, uh, they made a great job in translating this uh, architectural vision in in reality, in GRP pieces and uh, wood and uh, and uh, up to now, the, the results and the first uh, feedbacks we have from uh, boat construction and the interiors uh, tells us that we are in line with the, with the expectation and this is a really great result and uh, a great deserve for a lot of meaning for, for the, all the people that are working uh, uh, in this project. And you mentioned Mirko Arbor, um, and Mirko uh, also designed the interior for 11.98. I believe this is now um, his second boat he's done. I, I think the 11.98 was the first, and then this is the second. And um, he's done a beautiful job designing the interior, and as you mentioned, trying to mold that interior uh, for from his vision into a more performance-oriented boat, but also being able to be cruised. It's taken a lot of effort and very much detailed uh, design. And kudos to you and your team for you know making that a possibility for getting that beautiful interior to fit into this boat, so you can have a role winning yacht but also have something that's going to blow the socks off everyone else um when they come down and look at the inside of the boat <laughs> for example if you if you have a look to the bellissima the bellissima interiors uh, i remember when he presented us these stripes with the hidden lights uh, we told him ah, mirko it's almost impossible to do mm, it's a sailing boat, uh, so we have some limits. Uh, maybe we can take a panel and make something like a machining or uh, the, the reaction, I cannot tell you, of course, uh, because the architect has his vision and want, want to see uh, in reality the things that he designs, how, how you make it, uh, uh, sometimes it's not his problem. But at the end, I think that uh, we, we manage, so it's a great, uh, a great result, and we are we are uh, building a different boat uh, from the competition, not only outside but 
especially in Saudi. I agree. It's uh, the boat is uh, fairly unique, I guess you could say, uh, in this day and age, uh, where you've got many boats uh, are going with uh, a very heavy cruiser or a, or a pure racing boat, where a tie is focusing on this uh, smaller but rapidly growing higher performance cruising yacht, uh, which the 1498 ends up being. You know, who do you think, uh, you know, is, is there any competition for the 1498 at this point? Uh, sorry, I missed you for, for the last sentence. For the 14.98, do you think there's any competition really for for what it, you know for the performance and for the styling and the interior? Do you think any there's any uh, competing yacht out there these days? I don't know this uh, this market segment is uh, full of uh, competitors uh, of also high level high level. Uh, High level yards, so these mid mid size boats uh, is one of the most complicated uh, uh, fields where uh, and when you design a new boat uh, uh, you immediately feel that the competition in terms of uh, uh, aesthetics performance and uh, uh, Possible choices is extremely is extremely uh, valid, and uh, you find uh, uh, top level boats that maybe are heavier than ours, but uh, definitely classy and nice. We have some uh, competitors that are cheaper, but also with uh, some performance oriented feeling. So. Uh, it's not really not not an easy not an easy task to enter this uh, 48 50 footer uh, 50 footer range but uh, and the challenge is that you you have to do something something different uh, and i think we are trying to do this uh, after that the, the market will will answer the last word is up to the, to them but uh, Hope that the customer will like and enjoy this product, and especially enjoy sailing. Yes, definitely. Well, I, I think uh, I believe we've got a few a few boats already sold before the first one even hits the water. So, uh, all all good news so far. There's definitely been people liking the boat. Um, uh, Maurizio, next question: The boat is a uh, is a very large uh, sail plan for its size. Um, how were you able to accomplish having that size of a sail plan on this boat? But, uh, yes, you're right. Uh, we have not a, a short mast and uh, uh, the, the amount of sail area is uh, considerable. Uh, but this is also uh, to satisfy the double uh, the double sole of the boat. Uh, we have seen many times that, for example, uh, you know, we have the possibility of having the the overlapping jib or the self-taking one. And many times we have seen that uh, uh, boats with the self-taking that is definitely a nice solution for, for uh, short-handed uh, use and for cruising. Uh, in many many cases, this this solution is uh, brings an over under canvas boat. So a boat that is slow slow in the uh, in the light winds and is definitely something that it, we don't want. And uh, so we try to have this uh, fast boat with the the, the self taking and uh, have a sufficient stability both in terms of uh, hull, uh, form stability, and uh, weight stability from the keel to, to stand the, um, to support the, the full power, uh, the full power sail plane that has the non-overlapping jib and also the possibility of um, a bigger, bigger mainsail in the, in the Forest area version with the uh, semi-square top solution 
so adding more 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 power but if you see it's clear for example if you see the stern of the 1498 and compare to the uh, predecessor the 1398 we are much wider both on deck and uh, in the in the transverse section aft so when the boat is healing we have much more support from the uh, from the hull itself so uh, we always consider the uh, the comparison between the healing moment from the sail plan and the stability given uh, for example at 18 degrees of heel from the uh, from the boat and compare them in order, in order not to have a, a tender boat and the boat that is healing too much that is not comfortable and wife wives usually doesn't like and uh, so mm, it's a uh, as in the presentation uh, uh, the the um, italia yachts management all it's an aston martin so you have uh, performance and uh, under control i would say well that's that's fantastic and uh, i actually had a question here from uh, michele uh, he was asking you know um how did the um the preliminary polars, uh, the speeds and angles of sailing for the boat, um, how do they uh, compare to other boats out there? Oh, of course, we are faster. <laughs> 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 no, no, boat definitely will be, will be fast. And uh, what I think, uh, I'm pretty sure that will be, as I told in the, in the beginning, uh, she, will, she will move, uh, fast and smooth uh, in the water that is something that is uh, the, the feeling of a boat that is moving without uh, uh, too much effort is something that is very it's very nice uh, for a sailor and we are still sailors so unfortunately not too much but uh, well i i think um jeff Kennedy with his 1398 would say the same yeah. thing about his boat right now is it sails very quickly without much effort mm -hmm. so it's can't wait to see the, the 1498 with being a newer design, how that, uh, how that reacts very nicely. Um, you know, a big part of uh, the design um, has obviously been um, trying, to, trying to make it conform with the ORC rating rules. And um, how does the 1498 fit into the ORC rating system? Is this gonna be a, a class A boat? Um, you know, how does it fit with the rule? Yes, definitely will be a class A boat, and uh, in the big class uh, uh, we have not the, the 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 rating limits we have in the B and C in the smaller class, uh, where we you have to to play a lot with the uh, hull lines and uh, uh, appendages and features to try to fit the boat inside the. To fit a boat inside the rule. Here in the big class, the, the limits is much higher, so you are more free to design a, a fast boat uh, because also your competitor will, will be fast. So it's not paying dividends to have a boat that is forced around the, around the the the, um, the rule uh, the rule numbers. So uh, we have. Uh, quite uh, a light boat for, for, for a performance cruiser boat. We have a lot of sail area, we, have st we are stable, and all these factors are um, taken into account by the rule. But the simulation uh, tells us the advantages in, in, um, in performance of the boat are higher than the penalties you pay in the rule. So, Mm, for a boat like this makes no sense in my view to to try to make uh, force the hull lines and something like that as you are forced to do in the in the smaller class boat and uh, or see as all the other rating rules uh, try to penalize the boats that are in the corner of uh, of the rule itself uh, for a mainstream boat as I would uh, define ours uh, uh, 
there are there is always a, a good uh, a nice room for uh, performance and rating uh, and rating uh, uh, bias so mm, of course we we have uh, taken into account the rule but not too much to destroy a, a nice hull exactly and a boat has to look good and also sell good <laughs> Um, a question here from uh, Svetlin. Uh, he asked, um, in, in your opinion, how does the boat compare with, say, uh, the Grand Slave 48 or uh, a Club Swan 50? Uh, Club, Club Swan 50 is a, a different beast. It's much more uh, uh, one design racing oriented boat. It's very nice. It's completely carbon built. Uh, but uh, is not intended for uh, much for family use or for uh, also for cruising. Of course, it's a very good performing boat, nothing to say. Uh, the Grand Soleil 48 is much uh, uh, near to our, to our concept. Uh, I would say that, of course, uh, we had a look uh, on the boat and we took into account in the competitors' uh, comparison we made at the beginning of the project. And uh, is, uh, mm, is the boat I referred to in the beginning when I spoke of upsizing, so uh, wider boat, bigger boat, heavier boat, we try to, to, uh, to go the other way. So we are narrower and uh, Lighter, of course, uh, but with a similar sail plan, uh, right stability, and uh, 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 it's always difficult to compare uh, 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 two boats, especially if one is uh, uh, your daughter. Uh, to, to, but I'm pretty sure that uh, we will not. Uh, uh, we will not lose against them uh, both in, in the water and uh, uh, in the boat shows. Oh, excellent. Well, it's, it's good to hear, Maurizio. And a, um, yeah, another question here that had just popped up from um, Pietro. Um, you know, uh, from the racing side of the design and, you know, obviously with the pedigree uh, of a Detalia shipyard, is the boat going to be, um, uh, what's for racing, is the boat going to be more for offshore racing, uh, point to point, or windward lures, or, uh, or double-handed races. Now, wh what's going to be the, the primary focus of someone if they wanted to race the boat? You see, according to my experience, when you start to design a boat, uh, uh, having in mind uh, that must be an inshore or uh, offshore or uh, some kind of a special use boat, uh, uh, you are putting yourself in a corner, and it's not what the 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 yard asked us. Uh, they they asked us for a fast boat that is capable to uh, to be competitive inshore and and offshore. Of course, we are not a, a Volvo a Volvo sixty five boat for offshore races. Of course. Uh, but with uh, our sail plan hull and this, especially with the three meter draft keel, uh, we are for sure, and the narrow hull, we are for sure a very, very good upwind boat. So, uh, definitely in the wind or leeward uh, courses, uh, both will be, uh, will be competitive. And offshore with this uh, easily driven hull, uh, also, if not proper planning, hull will be will be also a good performance boat and uh, e easy to to manage. That it's important, easy to steer, pleasant to steer, and uh, with the right uh, performance and rating uh, number. So um, I think will be what. We define an all, an all round boat without uh, being too specialized and focused on a particular particular situation. 
Excellent. A, a good all round performing boat is, yeah. is excellent. Yes. Fast, that it's important. Yes. Fast. Because it's not, it's not nice to go on the robot. Um, no. <laughs> the, um, Obviously, for control and for speed, a big part of that uh, is the, the keel and the rudder design. So uh, how did you come up with the design for the keel and the rudder uh, to fit with the hull? Now, from the beginning, uh, it was decided to have uh, basically two, two um, possibility of a longer and, um, and shorter keel. The longer one is the three meter um, draft, and the other one is 2.5. They have the same concept. Uh, they are built from a, a fabricated uh, high strength steel fin, uh, and the, the two versions have the same the same bulb. The 2.5 is completely lead, and the three three meter has an empty pocket. Uh, uh, that you can, if you want, feel in the future. Uh, to have for both version the, the right uh, uh, stability and weight, uh, weight option. Mm, it means that uh, the shorter keel uh, to have a, the same stability of the longer one is not much heavier because uh, the added lead is more or less comparable with the um, uh, shorter the, the weight saving of the shorter fin and uh, of course with the longer keel you have uh, an advantage uh, an advantage upwind but definitely also the 2.5 uh, 2.5 keel uh, uh, boat will not be a beast uh, a bad beast <laughs> upwind uh, for as far as the rudder we never designed smaller rudders because we think that uh, a boat with a small rudder is uh, you have just small advantages, small gains in the wetted area, and it's much better to to have a big deep uh, blade that helps you in uh, manage the boat under sail in in difficult condition, and also is a plus when you have to to be in the port and mooring because the boat starts uh, easily. Uh, so the 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 rudder is in the in the same uh, the same concept of and the, the IPA that to have to to be in the port. So you know uh, uh, we are not only designing new boats; we are uh, doing existing boat of depisation. So I don't know how many thousand of uh, keels and rudders we have designed. So we are. Uh, Pretty confident that the package of the 1498 is up to date and uh, working well. Excellent. Well, that's great to hear. It, it, the, they play such a key role in the boat's performance are the, the keel and the rudder shapes. Natalia has yeah. done very well there with that, uh, with that design, and so have you. Um, for keel options, there are, there are two or three keel options for the boat. No, basically two, but there is also a third one that is a shallow keel. I don't remember exactly if it's a two meter or two two twenty something like that. Uh, it is the same option we also had on the thirteen ninety eight, and this def definitely is a cruise oriented keel for special areas where the the, the draft is critical. Is L shaped while the other the two other one are are T shaped. Gotcha. And, and does the rudder change with the, the shallow keel or is it the same rudder? Uh, two, 250 and 3 is the same rudder, mm -hmm. but for the very, very shallow keel, the, the rudder is shorter, of course, will, uh, because must be anyhow in the shadow of, 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 the, of the keel in order not to be damaged when, for example, unfortunately, you hit uh, uh, the, the sea bottom. Uh, Yes, well, uh, every sailor has hit bottom at least once. Anyone who says they hasn't has lied. So, <laughs> the um, uh, let's see here. So, um, well, thank you, Mauricio. And uh, I've, we've got an our next question here for Alberto. And um, Alberto, the, um, the the structure of the hull is uh, how is it designed to absorb the loads from the keel 
from the rigging, from the, the hull moving through the water? How, how is that designed to absorb and distribute the loads without flexing? Uh, if you want, I can also show you something a bit technical. If I can share my second screen, let's see. Can you see it? Uh, yes. yes. Okay, this is the actual 3D model in which we, we work, design all the system layout and stuff. And so uh, if you want a light boat, you have to design uh, a, a structural layout that uh, can ensure you the, the right uh, rigidity and stiffness to, to control, uh, for example, the, the, the torsion, the transversal torsion. And Maurizio did a great job. Also, uh, you, can, you can see the main structure. This is the grid one. That is the main... Um, structure stuff uh, that absorb all the loads and the it share all the loads to the to the to the how but the i think the the main characteristic the the, the more important one is the rig frame uh, structure what means this uh, to ensure the right discharge of all the loads uh, especially from the rigging and the shrouds you you have to to ensure this continuity from the shrouds uh, that arrive to the chain plate here to this rib this is the main rib uh, with a y shape that is the bed shape uh, to distribute the load all along the side of the hull this rib uh, ends up under the the grid and uh, this is very important important to ensure the the continuity and then the, the circle is close to the other side. This kind of structure uh, ensure to uh, distribute all the loads from the sail plan to the hull. And all this is helped by the, uh, also the bulkheads that uh, are not just fluid to the hull and the deck, but are uh, laminated, are bonded, and this uh, make the, makes the, the, the bulkheads stru structural as well. So in this way, this is a, a kind of structure that you, it's not so usual to see on both of this uh, kind of market, this kind of uh, uh, length. Uh, this uh, ensure the right stiffness to, uh, as Maurizio said before, to use that kind of uh, safe land, uh, bigger, uh, b so big for this kind of length. Well, it's, it's a very detailed uh, structural plan. And it, just looking at it, you can see how the, uh, the keel grid is uh, how structured. It's, it's very large and uh, beefy. And then we have the, the structural limbers uh, forward and aft along the hull and then transversely. And all of that is uh, carbon fiber reinforced, is that correct? Yeah, exactly. Uh, our old carbon fiber reinforced, in particular the, the grid, is unidirectional carbon fiber uh, reinforcement fabrics. Yeah. Well, it's very, very intricate and it looks incredible. So, well, we can't wait to see it in person. Hopefully, uh, hopefully very soon, but will be uh, completed in the water. And- uh, I, I can't wait to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we can all go sailing together. <laughs> yeah, exactly, we can. So, um, well, that's about the, the, the end of uh, the questions we had here for the team. Uh, so, uh, Maurizio, you know, the, the, to cap things off, you know, if, if, you, had, if you had a buyer who uh, was potentially interested in a 14.98 but had not yet made up their mind, you know, what would you tell them, uh, you know, or encourage them about the 14.98 versus another boat out there? What makes this boat special for you? It's a difficult question. <laughs> but what to say? We are smart, nice team, and uh, we are all together designing a, a nice boat. So why you should go to, to another yard? Uh, 
so <laughs> no, but a part of this, uh, uh, it's really when you, if the if the possible owner will speak with uh, uh, with this team. Uh, and by the way, I say hello to my business partner, Alessandro, that just joined us. And uh, I think that you can feel that there is the passion behind um, to do a, a proper uh, a proper boat. And uh, we, we are following these things uh, uh, like a, like a really a kind of a new baby. Uh, of course, sometimes we discuss uh, also hardly, but uh, we all want uh, uh, to, to put our passion and our feeling for, for sailing boats uh, inside the product. And I think that uh, from uh, the yard management to the designer, to the owners, uh, you can feel this thing. The, we really love what we are doing, and we try to transfer to the uh, to the client this. Uh, of course, as I told, there are um, many other wonderful products uh, in this size. In this size, mm, but the mix of uh, mm, style, passion, and uh, also tradition, because is not a, an old yard, but it's uh, old in terms of experience of the people involved. Uh, it's something that re is really difficult to find in, uh, in other yards, in other companies. And this is transferred to the products, I think. Well, that's excellent, Maurizio. And you know, me having seen firsthand uh, Atai yachts, um, the people, the culture, the experience, um, I must say that they're, they're, they are one of the fastest growing uh, sailing yacht brands in the world. And I truly believe that. So uh, we look forward to seeing the, the 1498 out there on the water uh, here uh, in the near future this year. And uh, I know it's getting late over there for you guys over in Italy. I know it's the, the afternoon in the U.S., but you guys are supposed to be uh, asleep at the moment. So... Uh, I think uh, we've run through our questions here, and uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, turn everyone loose. Uh, thank you very much, Mauricio, Alberto. Well, that was a really pleasure. Thank Real you, pleasure. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And, uh, and hopefully uh, we can do one of these again, maybe live sailing on the 1498 in a few months. It will be, <laughs> yes. be amazing. For sure. It will be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. well, great. Well, everyone, uh, have a, a great night, and thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, and, uh, of course, the webinar has been saved. We will be uploading this later to the YouTube, and uh, we'll take care. Thanks, Eric. Thanks a lot. Thank you to you. Thanks. 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 Ciao, guys. Bye, everyone. Ciao. Bye-bye.